What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Survivor Now podcast. And we are here to break down episodes five through eight of Survivor South Africa, Return of the Outcast. I'll start off by saying I am joined by my co-anchor that always joins me. You guys know him by now. Abraham, I don't know how long we're going to have him because his phone's prob probably at like <laughs> 17% right now. So we might just have him for 10 minutes here. Abraham, how you doing, man? Man, always a good day. And it's even a better day today. We get to talk to somebody from South Africa about Survivor South Africa. This is a great day. Yeah, if you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see her, but we are joined by a very special guest with an amazing, like, sweatshirt. Chucky on the sweatshirt. I love yeah, it. Oh, it's a rainy. <laughs> it's fitting for this season of Survivor South Africa. How tough it, yeah, how tough it is. We are joined by Santini. She was on Immunity Island, correct me if I'm wrong, and finished sixth place so she's uh she's pretty good at the game of survivor if you want to look at it that way how are you doing or lucky. <laughs> like it's so nice uh, guys uh having me uh, and, I, and i can't wait to chat about this season but thanks so much for having me it's such a pleasure and i i just love also meeting people from all over the world and and discussing a show we all love so much you are well, I was going to say you're our first guest from Survivor South Africa, but I forgot we've been doing interviews, but you're the first oh. guest we've had on like the breakdown shows. So definitely oh, welcome. <laughs> uh, awesome. <laughs> Before we... And, oh, go ahead, Abraham. Well, here's the cool thing. She can actually tell us a little bit behind the scenes because she's not on this season. So I, <laughs> I, have, I can throw out the first question. So I did Survivor US last year. Your pregame, are you allowed to talk to each other? Um, you you mean pregame now because it's a returning season, or if you no, it's each in other your or... season. In your season, that week leading up to the, the actual kickoff of the season, do y'all get a chance to talk intermix? No, when when you see each other on the island is when you see each other for the first time. Um, oh, yes. uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Flipping out. If, if I, so, what they did with us is they flew us in, um, and then they, we didn't know where we were going, and we were never in the same space oh. together. And then up until they put you in the hotel room, and we were in quarantine in our hotel room for two weeks with no cell phone, no cigarettes, <laughs> no alcohol, no nothing. And then even like any shoots and stuff you had to do, I never saw anyone. Only up until the day um, we got on the island and you were walking. So they were quite good with that. Did you now want to know? Did you guys? <laughs> we, we, so all 18 of us were together. We just couldn't talk to each other. So we, so we were in quarantine for two weeks and, but we didn't have any interaction. But on the pregame side, we did see each other, but we couldn't talk to each other. Oh, but seeing can also be talking like with the it, eye. It, or it, it, Definitely. It's a couple of them. <laughs> it's a couple of with I, they, it was a couple of we was like, are we making eye contact? So it was it was a fun pregame, but it wasn't any talking in it. Uh, I yeah. just want to see if y'all had the same setup. You can definitely no, communicate with your eyes, like the way you look at someone, especially if you're like, hey, like see alliance or <laughs> look at someone like you don't want to work with. Uh, but no, getting into this season, this week in particular, we're on week mm. two. I don't know if you guys have always done this in Survivor South Africa, but man, everybody came to play this season. I don't know if it's the two million Ren kind of hyping everything <laughs> up, but uh, before we really get into where episode five begins, uh, Sintoni, I want to get your, sorry, I'm going to go back and forth now. You it, can it, mix it. Stop. I'm going to mix it too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Santony, what are you feeling about this season so far? Uh, because we didn't get your opinions on week one. So what's standing out to you? What are you liking about this season so far? Oh, firstly, the location is absolutely beautiful. It looks pretty um, um, brutal. Um, mm. I think the cost, uh, the way that the uh, the producers have cost this season is absolutely spot on. The characters are just absolutely insane. Big personalities and big, like, big gameplays, big, like a very nice variation. And also the art department, I, I'm liking what they're doing. I think they are really doing an awesome job. Because, I mean, even in our season, I mean, the stuff, I, I go, you guys don't get to get your, um, what do you call it, your torch. It gets the auctioned, torch. eh? It, 
I, I didn't know that until after I was on the show. <laughs> so oh, but can, we we then, get our torches. Wow. So it's here on my on my patio and then everyone that comes here just looks at it and and just is in awe of the art department and it, this season is even better. I didn't even think they could like outdo themselves. Yo, so that I, is a few of the standouts. I got to give you credit. You're the immunity idol is the bomb. <laughs> Man. We they love talking about that. the art department. Abraham and I will literally like, you know, everyone wants to talk about the ins and outs of the game and stuff. I'm like, let's let's give the art department some credit here because that thing looks like it could be like straight out of a movie. I know. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. I love it. And also like the attention to detail and the cleverness. No, I'm, I'm loving what they're doing. Yeah, I, I definitely love shouting out everyone behind the scenes. But uh, let me remind you guys where we left off. We left off with Tanya going home after that very eventful Tanya and Pine Tea showdown that we were getting. Uh, we'll talk more about Pine Tea a little later on because we all love Pine Tea and the Survivor community can be harsh at times. So we will definitely get to that. Thank you, because I love Pine Tea too. Yeah, we talked... We, <laughs> We were talking to, to Shona earlier and she was like kind of pointing out some of the hate that's going around and stuff. She's like, Pine Tea's amazing. And Tanya said the same thing. Tanya was like, I still hang out with with uh, Pine Tea and stuff too. Like she still calls Aww. us and everything. So definitely like sometimes people can be a little harsh just based off like the edit they see or like what's going on in the yeah. game itself. Um, Pine Tea was actually here. Um, she, she was at my house. Um, she spent the night here last night. Oh, we just week, missed. The week she's got some. <laughs> uh, but imagine, you wouldn't have been able to. <laughs> imagine if Pinty just peeked behind the door. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, but we actually right. start with Pinty here. Coming back from Tribal, she throws out the idea of flipping and finally kind of flipping the structure of the tribe, getting out either Seamus or Tevin and... Abraham, we talked to both of them today, but this was kind of the theme of this episode is getting out one of these two like powerhouses. And I still don't understand why they were really being looked at as powerhouses because they weren't really bossing people around telling them who, who to vote for or anything. Just everyone was in an alliance with them. I guess that's the reason why. If, okay. if you look at Survivor at this whole, it's a temperamental game. Sometimes it runs hot, sometimes it runs cold. The editing was great for Tevin as basically the person running the game. If you look at the edits, Seamus was a part of it because he was he was in there with Tevin doing the edits. So it looked from our perspective as as you know, looking at the show, that Tevin was running things and he was making sure everything is kind of moving along. Pinty, I didn't see where she even came out. She basically came out the blue with that, but it's Survivor. Great move. If you can turn it and get them out. Get them all out. Santony, what are you thinking about their... Uh, oh, sorry about that. What are you yeah. thinking about their game at the moment? Uh, talking about uh, Tevin, Tevin and Seamus. Uh, Tevin and Seamus, one thing... I think what, what people need to keep in mind also, people that are watching this for the first time, they are returnees, and they were big characters mm -hmm. in their season. Uh, so they are automatically a big threat, knowing their history and them wanting to go big or go home. Um, what I didn't enjoy, um, and something that I felt, um, Tevin was, was maybe not like paying enough attention to, he said he's not gonna, um, waste time on genuine bonds. He's just gonna say yes to this one and yes to this one and yes to that one. And people aren't stupid. They pick these things up. People pick up the genuineness in, in what you're doing. And maybe that's why um, people felt played by them because it, maybe they, they didn't hide it well enough that they were just on a mission to get themselves to merge. I definitely felt like personally, if I was on that tribe, putting myself in, in that position, because that's what we do when we're viewing a season is we're like, if I was there, this is what I would do. <laughs> uh, I definitely saw same, or, sorry, Seamus more as like a, a bigger threat than Tevin because Tevin seemed like someone who would be pretty easy to talk to and easy to work with while Seamus, at least how I saw it, he had his people and that's how it was, you know, that's who he was mm. going to work with. Correct me if I'm wrong, if either of you guys see it in a, in a different way, but I, I think Seamus was definitely a bigger target than Tevin. Obviously at the end of the episode, we saw they went a, a different direction with getting Tevin out. 
I, I thought Sheamus had a better relationship with Dino because when Dino got hurt, Sheamus was the first one to come and said, hey, you're not in any jeopardy right now. Don't worry about it. We're not going to get rid of you. And Dino was instrumental in getting rid of Sheamus. Yeah. No, definitely. And and we're going to get more into that relationship later mm -hmm. on, the Dino and Sheamus relationship, and kind of talk about what we talked about with Sheamus earlier. Uh, okay, Abraham, I know you love talking challenges. Let's get into this first immunity <laughs> challenge, the yeah. running on water challenge. We know Steffi <laughs> is incredible at running on water. Uh, by the way, Santony, I should have joined you on the wine train. I'm trying no, to get I'm into... Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I should have joined you. I, I'm trying to get more into wine. Like when I'm watching Survivor and covering Survivor, I know it's kind of like, you know, a lot of people do it. It's, you know, so it's I good. need to get it's, into the wine drinking. You know, it takes you, uh, uh, you know, it just takes the edge off a little bit. And wine, <laughs> it's we in wine country here in Cape Town. So, yeah. I love <laughs> so, it. I, and it's already late. So, and I've actually <laughs> watched all three, four episodes again tonight before this um, interview. So, I, I needed did that wine. this morning. I, I was, yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, this morning I was going through making sure I had everything covered, but we get into this immunity challenge and there's a reward, comfort and sandwiches. I know, Abraham, you think they get way too much food out there, but I want to ask about the sandwiches too. They looked like grilled cheese. I know they're not grilled cheese. I heard butter, uh, tomato. Um, oh. Is there anything? I So what was the sandwich altogether? Was it basically just toast? No, I can put it, oh, guys, this is such a contentious topic in South Africa. Everyone has got a different recipe for their braai brookies. So braai is braaiing on coals, and brookie is, is obviously the bread. Okay. Um, but the main thing is it's because it's over coals that you do it over a fire. That's what makes it totally different to a grilled cheese. I don't know if you guys grill your cheese on a on a, on a fire as well, but... And so it's a very contentious topic. Some people put on chutney. I don't know what's it called maybe there by you. Do you know? It's chutney is like a sweet, fruity, like, um, wow. I've heard, you, I've heard of it on Top Chef. So I'm familiar with it. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> knows, I, can't even make, I can't even make like mac and cheese. So I am like way out of my taste <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's a, my, my, my recipe is like chutney. And then in our season, one of the rewards was supposed to be bribe breakers and we never got. So um, we got it off to, when we did our reunion, we, we made bribe breakers. But in any case, so it's a chutney and then we put already caramelized onions that you pre-prepare on there, tomato and cheese. Oh, okay. And then you, oh. But they, again, every person in South Africa will give you a different recipe. Some people put raw onions on. So I mean, it's literally... Like you will get people will get into fights about who's bribery. <laughs> I but mean, they just look just like cheese, onion, and tomato. I would it still looked delicious. And Abraham, I know you hate how much food everyone gets, but like <laughs> look, they're starving. The it. it looks it looks like it's it a lot of more. like you you get bread and you get the fixing. I'm like, we didn't get all that. We, <laughs> you got one thing, fish. You don't get no bread. Oh. You don't get. There's no fish sandwich. You just get fish. So, but it's. <laughs> Everybody responded to it the same. They was like, this is the best. I was like, what is that? So I'm trying to look it up. I'm trying to figure out what's in there. And then do you have to burn the toast? That's what no, I was like. that, that was a rookie mistake. <laughs> like seriously, everyone that was watching with me was like, dudes, you are burning it. It is not supposed to look like that. The okay. thing to a bribe rookie is you must do it on a very low heat and take your time. Uh, not yeah, even. you could tell they Get just wanted to eat. You could no, tell no, this. they screwed that up really, but I'm sure it was good. But no, that was not the right way. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess it's supposed to be burnt. Um, it's a bullshit. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It was. It's, it's. It's great to see the different types of food that's on the the, the challenge. And to see the reaction, you know, we all react different when we starve and what looks like food. Uh -huh. But they look like they was in heaven. And I was like, okay, well, it looks like a sandwich to me. It's going to probably taste like a sandwich. And they were like, he was just devouring it. And I was like, okay, cool. So the challenge itself is kind of brutal. I know for us, the challenges are brutal. So when we see Steffi running on the water, I'm like, you can run on water, but this is like day five. And you're just, at some point, you're going to be tired. But I will say when they brought this season, bringing back people that played before, 
on the emotional side, it seemed like they started on day 10. Mm. Forget about the other nine days. It's like, oh, it's on day 10. Well, that on fire. This is a challenge that is dominated by Mesu. Um, and basically, it's it's five nil. I don't know what Killarney was doing. They pointed that oh, out. No. <laughs> it's yeah, not. No. It's not. All, and like I was, uh, uh, yo, I, I actually couldn't believe what I was seeing. But <laughs> I, maybe she. It's just maybe overwhelming. It just. I think maybe also timing of that edit might probably look a little bit worse. Than it probably, was. probably a little <laughs> worse. Bad. When they were talking to her, like yes all the shades shouldn't have went towards Killarney. Like you all lost. Like, so everyone lost, but at the same time, Killarney, I, I wish she would have kind of owned up to it and been like, okay, I just was lost. Yeah, you're right. Cause you're she right. just, she just stopped and was like looking around. And then, and, and <laughs> yo, no, that was a bit of a fail. Uh, so yeah. I I'm a challenged beast myself. Oh, so I can't talk. Okay. No, no, I'm not a challenged beast at all. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I should not be dissing anyone yeah. for not doing my own challenges. Uh, I so- think Seamus said it best. He said when, when Pinty was trying to convince him that who's the worst, he was like, Well, we all lost. I mean, when you lose, you lose. You try to yes. point the finger because you can get votes and stuff, but nobody was successful. Exactly. So but Yanta- I love that last shot. Sorry, the last no, shot didn't. with Dante and Felix. It was Dante oh, and Felix. Oh, yes. That was so close. I just loved also the visuals of that color popping and them jumping. And I really loved that scene. I, this was I, I love that. I love that uh, Felix laid it out on her. <laughs> <laughs> this was, was like- a physical challenge that worked. We're going to get to mm. the mud challenge oh. later that I think should never be ran again in Survivor unless they change it big time. But I mean, it was a fun challenge and Yantau is heading to Tribal Council. And this starts a very long and lengthy losing streak. Actually, sorry, the Tanya one started the losing Mm. streak. Um, But this kind of just compounds on top of it. So the vote is going between Pinty and Killarney at first, but then Tevin's name is also being thrown out. And Teresa put this out there, and I quote, Tevin or Seamus needs to go, but it's not going to happen until Phil or Fe- uh, excuse me, until Phil or Felix come to their own realization. Yes, I love that from her. I love that line. And, and she it, summed it up perfectly. That's what needed to happen. Like ideally, mm-hmm. and sure enough, it did happen. I love this point, and this what this is what stood out to me is Phil is walking with, I believe, Dino. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they're walking on the beach and he says, look, Seamus is out here every day fishing and he's not out here at the moment. Where do you think he is? Him and Tevin are together. And we get this. The edit was really good in this part because they showed them looking around the the well for an idol and everything. So at this point, I'll start with you, Abraham, first. Who who do you think is going home? And is this the right time to make the move for Tevin? At this at that particular stage of the game, I would have kept Tevin. I just would have kept him. I mean, he wasn't a threat to anybody at that point. And you had other people that could have been voted out. So it's a finicky game in a sense that it can turn on a dime. And it doesn't take much to try to push somebody one way or the other. Or I wouldn't have sent Tevin before I sent Seamus. I would have sent Seamus first. I wouldn't have sent Tevin first. Um, but what I think changes this the whole dynamic is the fact that it's people that have played together on various seasons and that also know each other socially. At all our reunions, everyone is there. And I really think the Tevin bond with, with Tony is very strong. And again, they were all wondering about a swap, a split. And I mean, you'll see some of these players are not as... um involved in in like the life of the survivor like going to the reunions or but some are and tevin is quite a big character in that um space he's always at all the finales and he and he makes sure he's everywhere so i think that is also something that people keep in mind this time around because because you know a little bit more about the people and their connections and i think where shame is actually like in my eyes, I thought going for Tevin was a good move because he was going to be dangerous going forward based on his season. And also Seamus was isn't really someone that mingled with any of the people that's on the season. Like I think for like afterwards, like Tevin did. So I think that's something that 
that doesn't translate on 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 TV if you if you don't know like the little bit of back information I have or what you see on social media. <laughs> you have all the background info. I'm a you know, queen, a <laughs> gossip queen. It's <laughs> in Africa. <I'm> sorry, <laughs> and you're right. Like when we go to events for Survivor. A lot of the Survivor people that are still doing Survivor stuff are there. So if you put us back on a season, we've seen it and we've seen, we've talked to each other. So like Tevin said, you're easy to read if I know you. Yes. He said the ones that he couldn't read was the ones they didn't know. And also in Survivor, I think that's the most dangerous person is someone that you can't read. Because if mm. you can read someone, you can see when they're gonna they're busy lying to you or whatever. And that's what makes a person dangerous. And Tevin is very charming. And, I, and I'm very into star signs, I'm sorry, but Tevin is a Gemini. And Gemini, hey. you can't read. Mm. Are you a Gemini? <laughs> oh, well, are we sharing these now? I'm a Capricorn, so. Oh, you're hey, the look. famous Pinty Kilani and Teresa, by the way. What? Oh, yeah. oh I'm going to remember that now. Are <laughs> so you a Gemini? Oh, you see, you guys are charming. <laughs> I, I'll say if you, can read, if you can read someone, they're easier to manipulate. You can kind of mm. manipulate their gameplay because you know what, like you said, they know what they're going to do. But if you can't read someone exactly what you said as well, they are super dangerous because you have no idea. Um, Pinty is going to be a big topic, but Pinty is someone that I don't know what Pinty is going to do. I love her, but I can't really read into Pinty, um, which I mean, I guess it'd be better to have her on my side than against me. <laughs> but um, I, I did want to, I have a little game here for you guys. We have two mm. idols who are that are found this episode. So we have, I almost missed it. And thank God I went back to like rewatch because I almost forgot about this. So Steffi finds an idol that oh, yeah. can be played until the final six. And then Tevin finds an idol right in front of Felix. <laughs> so Santony, what's the more impressive idol find here? Well, obviously, if you, you if you can find an idol while someone is standing next to you <laughs> in Survivor, while well, everyone's eyes are trying to be everywhere, you are flipping good. I mean, the fact that Safi also decided not to sleep while the others were sleeping, but it's way easier to look for an idol when you've got time. Because idols on TV, people it looks like people are just like walking, oh, here's the idol. It takes forever no. and they're difficult to find, man. So it's, I think Tevin was like, I was so chuffed. I couldn't actually believe he pulled it off. I don't know how Felix didn't see him. <laughs> I still, I, Felix I, wasn't paying attention at all. I no. can't <laughs> wait. That's the first thing I'm going to ask Felix when I get the chance to talk to him is, where were your eyes? Because <laughs> we just see, I mean, even if it's on the other side of him, you know, you got to see him kind of like back there doing something like. But uh, well, maybe even, this is a testament to Tevin. Sorry, Abram, uh, that Tevin is just maybe disarming that that Felix didn't even think that if Tevin found it, he wouldn't tell him, you know? Mm -hmm. so, uh, but even, I mean, when he found it, it still had a string attached to it. <laughs> so he was still trying to stuff the string in his pocket. I was like, and on TV, it looks like he was on top of him. So I was like, why didn't he see it? But I thought Tevin was going to go a lot. I had him down his top two. Yeah, I thought he was going to do a lot better. But that's Survivor. The game itself can turn on a, on a dime. you like, what happened? <laughs> we also have Seamus who creates a fake idol. So I should have thrown that in there too because it doesn't have the power, the same powers as the other two. But a fake idol that, much like Shona did a few episodes ago, he's going to hide at Tribal. Uh, you South Africans are very good at like thinking because that's a brilliant idea and we've never seen it and we've already seen exactly. it twice this season. Uh, yeah. So we head to tribal. He hides it at tribal. Pinty has to perform. She is, she has to put on her best <laughs> actress and make everyone think that she's the target. And wow, give her an Academy Award. She <laughs> killed it. She absolutely like the way she was arguing with Killarney. I would have been fooled. I think we all would have been fooled that she was going home. But but a, a standout of this episode was was full for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, getting that whole thing in motion and his little quirky, like, I don't know, I like myself a little bit of a villain. So I, <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed him, him um, getting her to the point to do that. But yes, Academy Award for Pinty. And like, yes, she was on top of it. Because also what happens is people get paranoid. If you tell them 
just pretend the vote is on you. People will get paranoid and not stick to that plan. And the fact that she um, had it in her to just do it was yeah, very powerful. Bill is, is the, up until this point in the season, Bill, like, he don't know what's going on. He's just kind of saying stuff. And he's kind of, he doesn't want to be the person that's the head of the snake, but he definitely want to be right there next to the snake. And he's not, yes. he's not taking any blame, but he's like, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> I, mean, I thought I thought Phil was the player of the week. The way kind of villain form, the way he flipped. Like week one, we didn't really see much of Phil. He was just going with the flow. And then week two, he's like, All right, I'm taking over this game. And I'm and he just like flipped a switch. Although he did something on the last tribal council this week yeah. that I still oh. don't understand <laughs> at all. I, I'm trying. I need to watch it like another three or four times to understand <laughs> why he did that. Um, but Tevin goes home here, and then Seamus obviously shocked. Dino turns to him and says, you're good. You're okay. What did we think about Tevin's game here? Did he come out and play a little too hard at the beginning of the game, or was it more of wrong place, wrong time, and they just had your number here? I'm going to go at wrong place, wrong time. I mean, he played, if you look at the edits, he was consoling, he talked, he had some allies from a previous season. I mean, everything was kind of working in his favor, and he wasn't, like, Dante, to me, is all in your face. Tevin is not all in your face. He's kind of sit back and let it come to him, but I tell everybody the same thing. We only see 45 minutes on TV. There's still 23 hours in a day that we are unaccounted for. And that's probably what got Tevin, 23 hours. And don't forget, he went home with an idol in his pocket, mm -hmm. which is every Survivor player's nightmare. nightmare. But also, I think when you get, I think some people can just get to a point where they get too comfortable. I mean, because yeah. things were going his way. He had reason to feel comfortable. But your radar should always be on. You you should always be switched on. Um and picking up the the nuances because you can if you if you can't I think personally if you focus hard enough to and not be paranoid but you will be able to pick up if you keep on talking to everyone you'll see changes like poker you'll see a towel and I think you maybe got too confident and my theory is rather play an idol wrong than going home with one yeah and that yep. unfortunately like costume is is a big not to like this, but there's a bit of arrogance in the fact that you don't even consider playing it. Um, but but again, like you said, it's only 45 minutes of 23 hours. Hey, yeah. When you're looking at it on, on TV, you're sitting back saying, we know you'll get voted out. You have an idol. <clears throat> and Nico asks that magical question. Does anybody have a hidden immunity idol? <laughs> And then pauses. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that's the worst. Are you going to play it or her? Then you're like, well, I guess that's going to be an ornament at home. Uh, I, I feel like an <laughs> idol would burn a hole in my pocket for that exact reason. I would just be sitting there and I'm like, okay, I could play it tonight and be here tomorrow regardless of what happens. Or I could leave it in my pocket and then might have a souvenir by the end, end of the night. I feel like that would be a fear that I that I have if I went on the show. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. I agree. Uh, I agree. So we get to the next episode. The only thing that really happens at the beginning, again, we're just trying to touch on the main points mm. here because we have four episodes. To yeah. And I don't want to, I don't want to keep uh, Santony up all night until like two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically the only thing that starts off the episode here, Seamus doesn't trust Dino now. He's kind of on edge, even though Dino said, it's okay. I got your back. But we know how Survivor works. Once that trust is broken, mm. it's very hard to gain it back. Uh, we get to the next reward challenge. And I like to call it the Survivor South African amusement park. Because <laughs> Dino was having the time of his life. He was like <laughs> arms up on the, <laughs> while riding the cart and everything. He was having a, a hell of a time. Uh, Mesu, on the other hand, is still a giant mess. Everybody is barking out orders and screaming and stuff. Even at the, um, oh, sorry, I was thinking different challenge, but they're just all <laughs> over the place. Uh, Sentinel, is this, this Mesu tribe, they've been described all season as there's too many leaders. There, mm. and there's too many egos on this tribe. Is that what you're noticing while watching along too? Cause it's, it's pretty obvious that they don't have a clear cut leader 
Dante wants to be that person, but they don't have that clear person there. Strong personalities. I mean, <laughs> Marianne, Meryl, uh, Steffi, Tony. I mean, it's just, it is all over the place. And they, they really have a bunch. There's no one really sitting back. Maybe Tijan or Tijan. I, I think I always pronounce his name wrong. But yeah, they are all over the place. Uh, Shane, also, they're very strong personalities, but on Survivor, I mean, they cost very strong personalities in one way or another. Now, this is the cream of the crop, the post-merge tribe um, already, like, so it, it, it was bound to happen, but they must sort that out because it's going to... I mean, we're going to see what's happening. What's next, but... <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. And they should have sorted it out. <laughs> and Abraham, at the end of this challenge... Uh, Yontau is able to win here and we'll get to the cool kind of cool twist they put mm. on this as well because the reward is a spin of the the wheel. I can't remember who sponsored the wheel. I think there is a sponsor on it. That's a uh, lotto. Like I think a lotto. Like, yes, yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I, I love the sponsors and the ads and stuff. I told Abraham, I think every survivor should do it like survivor show. It's just subtle and it's a great way to fund the show and everything. But at the yeah. end of this, we had puzzle master Dino that everyone keeps pointing out. And Dante is literally like in his tribe's face saying, this is why we have to F and get out D Dino. This is why we have <laughs> no. to get out Dino. Uh, what were you thinking of that moment, Abraham? I mean, he, in front of everybody, he's like, we have to get him out. I'm like, can, not even I mean, on his tribe. <laughs> I mean, that, that can backfire on you because just like the three had the tattoos, somebody on the other side wants to play with somebody on the other side. So it could have backfired on him as we gonna, we're going to see that he was almost on the chopping block too. So here's the thing that's hard to do on a game of Survivor. Hide who you really are once they start taking away food and sleep. That so is once you take that away, it's true. like, <laughs> you're like, man, <laughs> you, your true personality brings itself back. You're trying to tell yourself, just stay calm. <laughs> Don't bite nobody's head off. And you're like, man, I haven't eaten in three days. I don't care about their feelings. And we see that because Dante raises his voice. Uh, and it's like, it's not intentional, but we're in the harsh conditions. And y'all got cold weather. Y'all got hot weather. So about day 10, you kind of day six, day seven, you're like, I care not what you said to me. <laughs> That's what was And they're all me. very competitive. They're all such competitive people. That's what was throwing me off with the cold and the hot. I'm like, they are wearing like winter jackets mm. at night. But during the day, I'm like, it looks scorching out there. So I was confused at first. I'm like, is it not as hot as I think? Or is it not as cold as I think? And then someone told me like the nights are freezing and the days are mm. hot. And I'm like, oh, I forgot about that whole thing, especially when you're out there. Um, yeah, but, and I think it's because it feels like a bit of a desert vibe. And I think that mm. in the desert, like it's also super cold at night. But you know, everyone always complains that the South African survivors get too many warm things, but it's really very cold it, in our season, and you can see it in this season. And production won't ever give them um, or let them take uh, jackets if it wasn't really, really, mm -hmm. really cold. Well, let's 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 get a little peek behind the tent on that. Mm -hmm. We had we had to basically go through everything we wore had to be approved. Is that the same for yours? Yes, yes. Pictures we had to send pictures. And then, um, yeah, we couldn't, yeah, the only like ration does like to this, to this, but yeah, everything was pre approved. And yeah. a bit of a strip search before we went on, eh? <laughs> so for real, for we real. For real, I, <laughs> I believe it. Yes. People are you do a on strip search. Yeah. Yeah, you do a, uh, we did the same. We had a, I'm sorry, we had a, a guy that was, hey, once he patted you down and made sure you didn't have anything, you had to basically sit in an area before we left. And if you went to the bathroom, you had to go back through the whole process again. It was funny. <laughs> oh, you know, our one was we were in the bathroom. Uh, when when I got to your room, then I go into the bathroom. And then there was a winner. And then I had to throw all my clothes out. And then they would go through each item and then throw it back. And then wow. <laughs> wow. So yeah. like no, liter literal strip out. search. A little, <laughs> hey, a little, a little, a little peek behind the tent. So yeah. you kind of understand, yeah. I love that title, <laughs> Peek Behind the Tent. Peek, Peek Behind, behind the, the Tent. That's why love I have that. him. I haven't been able to be on the show yet. So Abraham's my guy yeah. for You must for say all when, not that. if. When you're going to be on the show. When I'm going to be on the show, yes. I entered I, four times before I got in, so. I think I've sent five or six videos in. I'm about to do my one for this year. 
uh probably after we get off here so i'm excited i'm excited this so. by the way statistic wise capricorns you're capricorn as <laughs> one of the most american survivors really yeah oh no, I'm I'm a <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we've got a good chance <laughs> don't tell me that all right so we get to uh the spinning of the wheel yontau wins uh the reward challenge here they send Killarney he's Nico says who's feeling lucky they said Killarney I'm like I love Killarney but Killarney has not been lucky at all this game and she gets <laughs> a bag of lentils which at, at the time I thought they would have hated that but we were just told in an interview that that's what they wanted they wanted a bag of lentils I guess it's oh. good can kind of hold on to it a little bit and then uh they get to choose two people from the opposite tribe to come and join them. And they did a terrific job here because they kind of huddled up and they said, who's on the outs, Tony and Tejon. And I was like, wow, did they just nail that? And you could see the <laughs> breakfast club start to sweat a little bit. Um, and then Tony goes to spin the wheel and she gets mac and cheese. So they get mac and cheese and a bag of lentils. And while they are eating and enjoying that, we all knew this was coming. <laughs> Tony <laughs> spills everything <laughs> on that tribe we know she's been wanting to move tribe so uh santony what did you think watching this all go down because it was it was kind of funny to watch tejan wanted nothing to do with it and tony's just throwing dante under the bus and for yelling in her face and stuff like this what, what were you thinking when this went down i was laughing but i was also not surprised i mean uh, tony uh yeah i mean they voted off um, PK, her biggest ally, she hasn't had a good time there. So I kind of, I got where she was coming from, but it's kind of shooting herself in the foot. But that's the kind of game Tony plays. She plays that kind of game and and and, and maybe talks first and then um, like thinks about it later. But I love characters <laughs> that, that just like, you don't want everyone to be as streamlined and, and calculated. But I enjoyed like Tajan's comments on it, like and, and running back and, <laughs> that I already knew. <laughs> Abraham, you had to you know, this, hey, man. This is so, TV gold. Survivor, Survivor has no, no, no list of unsurprises because it's like somebody out of that group was going to tell everything, and Tony is perfect for it. And so <laughs> it, 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 it matched up with her. But you're right; it's, it's it could be a Survivor death sentence, or it could be a savior. You just never know. But I, I would have took the, I would have took the road of. I'm not saying anything. I'll keep it a low conversation and mm. kind of sit back and watch. Even in my season, I kind of sat back and watched people to see, you know, what was going on. But I mean, you just, here's the thing about it is everybody comes out there with a game plan that ultimately gets destroyed yes. and you have to rethink your game plan. Yes. And actually not even have a plan. Cause I always say when you go and survive, there's so many variables. So many like personalities, uh, challenge changes, twists, whatever, luck, you know, it. everything plays a part. So you can't really have a plan. It needs to be fluid and adaptable. Uh, this is what, really good. <laughs> I want to <laughs> I want to talk about the other side of the coin, though. We talked about Tony there. Sometimes we do this while we're going through the breakdowns is we kind of idle out a certain player that we may be confused or the audience might be confused on where they fit in the game right now. Wow. Tejon is someone that what is his game right now? Where is he at in his game? Cause we see later on down the, down the road, just jumping ahead a little bit where there's this plan after the tribe swap where it's him, Tony, Felix and Teresa and Tejan's just like, all right. Like we see him working with Tony, but he doesn't really like Tony in in the game sense of things. He's obviously not in the Breakfast Club. I almost feel like Tejan at this very moment is the most wild card in the game. And because I just, mm. from the very beginning, I haven't really seen him fit in anywhere. And obviously being from the Maldives uh, or Maldives or however you want to mm. say it, uh, he's, he's the sole person from his season. So Abraham, I'll start with you on this. Where is Tejan in, in this game? Let's look at first from the first, Four episodes in editing. I didn't even know he was on the show because we never <laughs> saw him. We never, we never saw him, or we never saw him really being a part of that first four episodes action. We didn't see him until basically him and Dante got together, and now they're at the outpost, and they got a idle clue going back, and he's like, okay, well, he does have a little strategy, 
and now you kind of see the editor is giving him more voice. So I think as mm. we move to these next episodes, we're going to see more of them. But if you go back to that challenge in the mud, you got to remember Dante asked him, hey, have you found the idol yet? Because we find out the idol has to be swapped with somebody in another tribe. So Dante needs the idol. He's found his, but we're still missing one. So he's playing the game. So I'm kind of interested to see how it's going to play out moving in these next episode. But the first four episodes, I, mm. I didn't even know on the actual show. I was like, where's he at? He was definitely getting that like purple edit. Yeah. Uh, Santony, it, where, what do you think moving forward with Tejon uh, being out there on the island with your experience playing this game and, and some of these players knowing these players, is there a path for him to maybe fit in with anyone? Is there anyone he's not working with that you're kind of shocked he's not working with? No, I, uh, I mean, his season was so long ago. And also, um, I think he's the kind of person probably playing a similar game to maybe to um, Kilani is because their seasons were so long ago. I think really they just want to keep a low profile and just be anyone but me kind mm. of thing and and swap around and be a bit like have more breathing room than to commit because they still like old old school so, 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 South African survivor in the beginning was so boring nothing mm. but be, South Africans are very polite there was no fighting there was nothing <laughs> really like and and I think they still from that like old school just get through one vote through the next and then they'll start making bigger plans of the merge so I think that's kind of where he's at. Well, well Masu, they've gotten over that. Yeah, <laughs> they, got, yeah. they have. This, this game has uh, this this game so far has been a feisty one. Definitely, wow. we go to really quick the immunity challenge that we get to next. Oh, I do want to put out that Steffi and Marianne in this moment kind of formed a duo. Which I, I don't like because I picked Meryl as my winner pick and they kind of left my girl out here. But so it's like an alliance inside the full package alliance. It's like the small package that. inside the full package. Um, I, I love but, Meryl, but I love that. I love Steffi mm. and, and um, Marianne. But did, it, did you pick up when Steffi called Marianne? Uh, did, did you hear what she said? So they were sitting and Steffi said, Marion, I need to tell you something. Or oh, she didn't say her name. She's like, I need to tell you something. Please promise you me you won't tell Marion. And she said, I mm. am Marion. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did not, I how did I miss that? that? I've watched it uh, My twice. sister told me that. And I watched it. And I, it was so funny. It was hilarious. Oh, it's my God. Was that, was, was that when she found the idol and she wanted to share that with her? Yes. Yeah. She's, and she's like, oh, I'm Marion. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stevie got a Meryl's and Marion's confused there for a minute. No, it's it's all the ends, <laughs> right? On, yeah. <laughs> now I have to go back and watch that because I, I literally <laughs> watched that scene me... twice and I've missed it both times. Now, if Don't my worry, sister didn't tell me about it, I wouldn't have seen it either. I butchered some of my castmates' name on my drive. <laughs> uh, me too. Oh, so <laughs> I was like. What's your name again? <laughs> so, well, my fear is it, like when I happens. start when I start a new job or something, I'm so <laughs> bad with names. Like I have to look at your name tag forever. And it takes me at least, unless I'm like talking to you every moment of the day and stuff, takes me a little bit to understand and remember people's names. So I'm always scared that if I went to the, like tribal council, like day two or day three, <laughs> whoever I'm voting for, the person on the outside wouldn't remember their name. And I, I would just be like, <laughs> This person wearing this or something Imagine, like that. Imagine, that would be hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. So we get to uh, the immunity challenge. It is a ninja warrior spelling bee type thing. Ninja warriors start with a spelling bee finish. Uh, the big things about this uh, this challenge was uh, Mesu wins and Dante was literally screaming. This time he was screaming. Last time Abraham and, mm. and I were like, he wasn't really he just raised his voice to talk to you a little bit more. But this time he was like bloody murder screaming for her to uh, F and crank and pull up the crank mm. and stuff. And and someone turns around to him and is like, Dante, she can't. And they already won the challenge and he's still Yay. screaming. I'm like, oh, That's my cool. gosh, Dante. <laughs> and, and again, where is Phil? Because Phil, you got to see all this. You got to see. <laughs> It's those 23 hours that you don't account for. You'd be like, come on, Dante. We can't have all that yelling and screaming. 
Mm, yeah. No, but I Dante is I so agree. switched on this season though. He's in it to he, he's like putting his like every single last ounce of everything. He's like probably too focused if there's such a thing. But Yon- we'll get to that probably. <laughs> <laughs> Yontau is going to a tribal council once again. Seamus tries to get the vote on Dino by telling the women that he wants the women out of the game, which is just no one is buying it. You literally see, I love Teresa when she walks to Pinty and she's like, I had to hold back from laughing the entire time. I love Seamus, but it was, he even said in his interview, if you guys haven't checked out the interviews, go check those out. Um, But he says in his interview that looking back at it, he's like, what a stupid player. Like, I'm like, no, you weren't that. He's like, it was just, it was a bad plan. I'm still kind of confused what made him go with, with Dino for Dino, because you know, Dino was still willing to work with them. Dino even said after he gets voted out here, it the target was not on you until I heard my name come out of your mouth. So I guess my question is here, what do we take away from Seamus's time in the game? Obviously, this was a an emotional journey for him because he really struggled being first voted out last time. I felt he did a much better job this time. And if he plays again, Oh, I think he just died. Uh, so it's, a, oh, it's, it's it's all good. It's us. Uh, um, so yeah, if he plays again, this can be something that he grows from. But what was his mm-hmm. time in the game? What did you think about it? I think he definitely redeemed himself. I think you could see he, grow, he had grown so much as a person, even before just um, going on to this season. And I really felt for him. I, I was quite sad. Um seeing his, his little exit interview there. And I was kind of rooting for him because you could see, like, literally out of everyone that I've seen so far, because, I mean, it's it's a returning season and an outcast season, um, he's probably one of the few people that kind of it looked like he learned from his mistakes. And he was trying a different and a more softer approach. But I think you you get rattled when your biggest ally gets blindsided. And I mean, he couldn't have trusted Dino after that mm-hmm. in any way. And he tried, at least he tried. Whatever like he could, he tried. And that's all you can do is just keep on trying. I was quite like, yo, why did he not play that? Or like, I mean, he had that fight. I mean, they could he could have maybe tried to do more. Yeah. But I think yeah. his fight was about mm-hmm. sealed by then. I think the problem is what people don't um what people sometimes do on Survivor is they make little like duo friends. And you've got your little best friend, like at school. And people notice that. And I think that's maybe one of his mistakes, that maybe him and Tevin on the outside uh, look too close as mm-hmm. just friends doing everything together. People think that people don't notice, but people do. Because you don't have anything else to do on Survivor, but just pay <laughs> yeah. attention. Hang out and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I, I think with the idol, though, um, the theme of the season has kind of been like blindsides. Like everyone's been blindsided because he fully believed he had the votes on Dino until I think he started seeing his name. He was like, Oh no, it's, it's me. And I I like the embrace that they had towards the end there. Mm. When he, like I said, when Dino was like, I wasn't going to vote you out, man. So that was good to see as well. I really hope, I really hope because Shona obviously gets voted out as well. I really hope that someone finds one of their idols this season and tries yes. to play it. I think it would be oh, like survivor that'll be gold. Hilarious. That'll be hilarious. Because to yes. them, they'd be Imagine. like finding an idol. And it isn't. That would be so funny. I <laughs> love, love that. It. For those of you yeah. listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube that's that are wondering where Abraham went, his mm-hmm. phone was at like 10% or something. So he has, unfortunately, his phone, I shall say, died and he won't be uh, joining us for the rest of this. But it's all right because we still have Santana here to cover uh, the last couple episodes. So episode three and, and these two episodes really flowed together because mm, episode three yes. was a non-elimination episode. Yes. We know they have to have a few a few of those to really get out mm. this four episodes a week. Are you liking the four episodes a week or is it a bit too much? No, I love it. Love um, it. I struggled with that in Australia with the Australian Survivor because the episodes were quite long. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not exactly sure how long, but I'm really enjoying this. I think they're fast, they're pacey. I love the fact that you don't have to wait a whole week because I think the casual viewer is 
like after a week they've already forgotten all the the, the, the mm-hmm. like backstabbing on the the nuances that we as regular like fans pick up quickly on and read about all <clears> week <throat> so i like what initial was quite a, like it felt a bit weird because when the person that gets voted off doesn't get a n- lot of shine because it sounds weird, but when you get voted off and there's a week that goes by, there's lots of interviews and stuff, mm-hmm. and now it's like one day off to the next. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm loving this. And it's also in a good time. They changed it to 6 o'clock in the evening, which okay. I think is better for, for the younger viewers um, because it used to be at 7. So I'm liking this one. And now I'm like I'm having a bit of like withdrawal to wait till <laughs> Monday, man. <laughs> I, I'm never going to complain about more Survivor. Now, I watch mine yeah. because I get to prepare for the the interviews and stuff. I, I My problem is when I start watching it, I'm like, Randy, watch one a day, like spread it out. No, I, I'll watch like all of them tonight or all of them tomorrow. And oh, that's what lucky I have to fish. touch. No, that's. Yeah, <laughs> but now I don't. I don't have that uh, luxury, so I have to wait. It's actually fun. Like it's it's better. It. I am kind of <laughs> jealous because if you take that away from me, I watch it and it's like Monday, then Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> but what ends up happening is I watch them all together, and yeah. then I have to like on Thursday go back and kind of pick yeah. stuff up because they just all flow together when you're watching just four hours straight of yes, it that makes sense i get you <laughs> uh <laughs> but we start off here episode three uh pinty is bragging to everyone about how the vote went kind of in front of shona, shona and kalarni mm-hmm. it wasn't her brightest moments i'll say that i understand like she she's been killing the votes and mm. and doing really great at tribal to make everyone think it's her but at that moment, I was like, oh, I was kind of on Phil's side. Killarney, just mm. dial it back just a little bit. Um, but Tree Mail arrives and both tribes are anticipating a swap because they hear the words. I think it was be well prepared. I yes, think were the yes. words that came across. You get that. I mean, I haven't played the game, but if that's the words you hear and you're out there playing at the moment, you ha- you have to assume it's a swap. Well, I could never decipher those three mails very well. So <laughs> I, uh, but there's usually someone that puts two and two together. Mm-hmm. But this time for me, even it was quite obvious. Do you guys take your your stuff to the challenges all the time, anyways? Because a swap yeah. could happen at any moment. So everyone some was people, like, you know, some people get a bit arrogant and don't pack everything. But they, the crew make you pack everything when you go to a challenge every time. Which yeah, is a I bit mean, of a pain. It's well, yeah, if, if they didn't, then it's like, oh, the crew's not making us pack, which means we're not switching yeah, this time. Exactly. So they're very good with that. This was they do swap tribes. This was a unique way to swap tribes that I've never seen before. It was like, I don't know. This is going to be a lame way to describe it. So if you haven't seen it, first off, why are you watching the show? Secondly, go watch <laughs> the show. It was like a food coloring type thing where they just drop it in water. You like this? I loved this. It I loved was so this. unique. It was so unique and was so visually beautiful. And again, if you look at that um, that one challenge we spoke about with the powder, it's got that same visual e- effect to it. The colors going in the water, like when the power was, you know, the powder jumping out there. But I just loved how it feels like we're on some like space ship kind of a I know, <laughs> I like um, it. I like it's a it. big star trek theme in any case to larue's um um do this season but i just think it was so beautiful because sometimes when they have to like break the egg or put the paint mm, or yeah. it doesn't always work or just draw from everyone. a bag yes this was really i mean this in the record books or in the uh, beautiful moments was was this. I, I can really give them so much credit for that because it's so clever. And why has no one ever thought of this? I, that, that's <laughs> so why I have to give it to Survivor South Africa. The theme of the season, this, there's a lot of original stuff here. Yes. Um, we do get three colors, which at first mm-hmm. I was like, when I first saw Shona get the yellow, I was like, ooh, three tribes? No, it's <laughs> two. They're leaving it with two. So it was red, blue, and yellow. Um, and the tribes end up being like this. So the new Mesu tribe is Teresa, Tony, Steffi, Killarney, Felix, Tejan, and Pinty, which means that uh, Tejan, Steffi, and Tony are mm. the ma- or minority here. Um, and then the new Yanta tribe, Dante, Dino, Pelis- 
Pelissa, uh, Marion, Phil, Meryl, and Shane, and then Shona. When she got that yellow, what were you expecting that to be about? Because she thought she was going to Outpost, but it ended up just being Choose Your Tribe. I don't know. I kind of thought she was going to just have to pick a tribe. Mm -hmm. Um, Because there was already so much happening with the tribe swap. So I don't know. Just instinctively, I thought they'll make a pick because it would be a nice twist. Because, I I mean, it will be very, like, lame and drawn out now for her to go this place. And there's already been so much happening. uh, Yeah. It is nice and simple. And and was I the only one confused at the moment why she chose the tribe she did? Like, I was looking at it like, I'm like, Dino and Phil, okay, I could see it. She might want to be helping them out. But Meryl said it in the term, in the terms of Survivor. You go where you're going to have the numbers. And she went the opposite way there. Uh, I think it would have been much easier if she just chose to go. Uh, sorry, I got to make sure I got the right tribe <laughs> on the new the new Mesu tribe. If I think it would have made so much more sense for her and her game. And ultimately, she does end up going home, whether that was injury related kind of or not. I think, you know what I think it is, is sometimes you find comfort in another person. Mm-hmm. And I think personally, what I instantly thought when she picked that tribe is she wanted to go where Dina was. Um, when I watched it the first time, I'm like, girl, like, why? Um, and then I really, you could see, I, mean, I think she really has a very good relationship with Dina. And I think she went that way because of Dina. But then when I watched it again, and she was giving the motivation about why, rather let me help save numbers. Um, for emerged, it made a lot more sense. Well, when I watched it the second time, I kind of mm. got her logic um, for doing that. But I, deep down in my heart, I still think she wanted to maybe also keep Dino safe because I mean, really, full. I mean, they don't have such a. And and I, I think this was the the typical show now being very selfless in her choice. Mm. Um, well, she made not leaving Dino out to dry technically. She made sure that everyone knew who she was when she showed up at camp. This was this was so <laughs> funny. At the end of the oh, year, that we, was the worst. We, this was so funny. At the end of the year, we always do like Survivor Awards, and this is going to be a front runner for Please. comedy gold. Uh, oh. She comes back and she lays down the Survivor <laughs> rules: no stealing, no going through anyone's bags. Let's just, you know, kind of good kumbaya. Well, she called like it that. something, the unity chat. Yeah, that's it. That, <laughs> thank <unity> you. Chat. <laughs> <laughs> she does that. And Shane, the look on Shane's face <laughs> was like, I am not. And the moment everyone walks away, Shane, uh, Shane says in his confessional, <coughs> you were, let me get something straight. You were here on invitation only. <laughs> And then he's like, if you want to go through people's bags, go through their bags. And he immediately goes through people's bags. I love oh, this. This was so That was based. That, no, I really loved and I love Shine. I think Shine <laughs> is an incredible player and an incredible character. I just, yeah, I feel like we're not seeing enough of him yet, but hopefully we will see more. But that was so funny. And the fact that Shana has got just no idea how that would come across at all. <laughs> she was just like let's just all be nice i was like shona do you understand some of the people you're playing with you've got shane you've got marion like come on like and also i mean not to jump aid but when she told dante about the wood let's not burn too much wood during the day (laughs) like and (laughs) i just i just couldn't and i mean literally just when she came back from what we know is going to happen, but uh, no, I just, and I think she's just <clears throat> such a flower child. She, she probably didn't even think how that came across. In Shona, survival. we love you. If you're listening to this, yes, we do. love you. <laughs> uh, no. And then on the other tribe, Pinty is struggling because mm. messu has got, I didn't realize this, but they have no shelter. They've just been sleeping under a tarp in the sand <laughs> and no food. So they tell, they tell everyone that they eat once a day and Pinty's like, Oh no, no, we are not doing this. Uh, how much did you guys on, on your tribe, how often did you guys eat daily? It sounds funny, but even looking at the size that I, I am food never bugged me at all Mm -hmm. on survivor. I don't know why. Um, but I think the last reference I can remember is we had a half a cup of or probably less than half a cup, but so half a cup of cooked rice a day. Okay. Uh, once, once, like once a, a day. day. 
Yes. And that was end. that was good enough for you? Yeah, like I would even give my stuff away. Like you watch our, uh, our season still. Did mm. you ever watch it? I you haven't watched it yet. I haven't viewed <laughs> it yet. And I okay, yeah, so to, I'm not going to give too much away. <laughs> I want to go back and watch because all these international seasons, brand new. I've always mm. been a diehard uh, Survivor fan, but obviously growing up, it was just U.S. Survivor. Yes. And then when I started podcasting, I was like, Okay, I've always heard about Survivor AU, Survivor South Africa, yes. just never knew how to watch it. So the last uh, Survivor Australia season, Blood versus Water, mm -hmm. was the first AU season that I've ever seen. And oh, this wow. is the first South African season. I thought about going back, doing a ton of research, finding yeah, out okay. who these players are. But I'm like, I might be the only podcaster out there that has no former knowledge of any of these players so i will truly be watching it and breaking that it down actually as a great because i can see i can see that and i like that and mm -hmm. i think it's a very interesting pers uh, perspective to have because you you don't know anything about how that plays yep. all these all these people are new to me and everything so like <laughs> i don't have any like preconceived mm -hmm. notions based off their former games and everything like that um we already kind of touched on it earlier uh, abraham did if you have anything you like to add here, they do go to the outpost. They sent, I thought it was interesting. They sent Dante and uh, Tijan. Obviously, um, they don't know the other ones coming, but that's two former mm. members of the Mesu tribe. Doesn't seem like Tijan. Sorry, I also feel like I'm saying his name <laughs> entirely yeah, wrong. Me but, too. <laughs> uh, Tijan. I think it's Tajan. Tajan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tajan. Um, he really doesn't have any interest in working with Dante. They both mm -hmm. get a clue for the idol. They both come back. Neither one of them say it, obviously, which kind of love because in U.S. Survivor, everyone's been like, tell everybody about your idols and stuff. And it's oh, like, really? oh, yeah, like keep it to yourself. Like that's what Survivor's supposed to be in the U.S. version of the show. Now, everyone's been telling whoever yeah, was, would listen. I mean, I, I kept it. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you about our season, but I do, while watching that, I was thinking we must come up with a different plan mm -hmm. for this. This whole strategy of coming back and saying we didn't find anything. Because I was thinking, you know what I would have done is I would have come back because you know you have the clue. Mm -hmm. so I would just come back and like maybe just tell someone like Tony that will tell everyone in any way. Or just tell a few people, or tell everyone, guys, I'm going to tell you what the clue is and just lie. And That's tell them what, the clue it, is, smart, yeah. you know, it's somewhere by a what, what, and you just make up a story because that looks way less suspicious than, I mean, people get used to the fact that you're not going to tell them about the clue, but mm. I just thought to make it interesting, Dante or Tejan should have just lied and said, Yes, here's the clue. We couldn't take it worse, but this is what it is. And if, if you, you say you people if you, like digging everywhere, <laughs> if you say you got like a clue too, it's not like you say you lie and don't say anything people just assume you have an idol or something yes. like that but if you yes. say you have a clue no one yes. really targets someone for having a clue or someone else said i think it was felix but i could be wrong someone said make up something say like an extra vote yeah, yeah someone said that yes no, no one oh, uh, Teresa might be upset it. I can't yeah, 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 yeah 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 so yeah, make, make up something up an extra vote or something that is believable now the problem with doing that is then they'd want to see it that's the the but, only yeah. problem but again like you can say we couldn't bring it with but yeah it will it will probably just cause more drama for yourself to keep up that lie because mm -hmm. someone's eventually going to speak to tajon and it's going to come out so maybe keeping quiet is probably the best call in the biggest scheme of things <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that'd be my one problem is i i would take your advice go out there and i would say i got this clue and then i'd have like two or three people show us the clue and i'd be like oh what, what, <laughs> what clue again i actually yeah. buried it yeah i don't even remember <coughs> myself. that's so funny um let's get to i want to jump ahead here to the mud challenge because oh. I know we've probably gone a little over an hour. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for no, uh, doing this, this with us. Uh, <laughs> but we get to the mud challenge. I will let you go first because I kind of have a rant about it. Um, this was oh. just a mess. <laughs> Not pun intended. It was <laughs> yeah. a mess. What did you what you think about this challenge? Because there's few times that we have a challenge that just does not work on the show. Mm, I 
to be honest, I never, everyone online is referencing the fact that it was in a Australian season or in another um, a US one. I can't recall seeing that challenge before. Um, but the challenges, I mean, when you're there, most of the challenges of, I mean, some of our challenges, even just the puzzle took like two hours just to finish a puzzle, um, which it doesn't translate on screen. So I don't know. I, while looking at it, it was visually interesting. I love the fact that the balls were coming down, but I'm not a big sports person, so I couldn't really tell you what the logistics would be. But obviously, it was an unwinnable challenge. Um, I like the fact that I'm sorry, jumping ahead, that they no, added extra balls mm -hmm, um, yeah. at the end because that kind of made more sense. But um, you you can rant, do the rant. I've got another rant. Uh, yeah, <laughs> about another, the challenge, not yeah, the actual challenge. <laughs> this is just going to be us ranting. I'll just say, yeah. um, this is just a challenge. I see what they were going for. I think it would, if you ever bring it back, I think it would work one ball, two people, see who can push. Maybe the, and, and maybe get rid of the mud. I know that's a big thing Abraham said mm. is get rid of the mud because that ball is already he heavy enough. And Shona, yeah. when we were speaking with her, she was like, can't remember the number she said, but it was like 115 something. Yeah, it's uh, 120 kilograms. Yeah. So and, and I've never been a fan. You have in U.S. seasons that I can remember the challenges with like the big boulders that they have to like yeah. push and stuff. And I always, always have hated those types of challenges because I'm like. These things are heavy. You're asking for it to fall on somebody and someone's going to get seriously hurt if it rolls over their leg or something like that. Yeah, um, I almost got like a big block or uh, pretty much almost fell mm -hmm. on me in our season. Oh, and those challenges are really all of them. I mean, when I was on there, I actually couldn't believe even watching for Survivor for so long. Yeah, I couldn't actually believe how hectic those challenges were and actually how dangerous and not because of production not doing it properly but it's just what it is yeah yeah there's so many room for for injuries and we it's, had a lot of injuries here we had we had um steffi who got taken out of the challenge and i knew the moment she went down and held her leg i was fearing the worst i thought maybe she re re-injured her acl um mm. thankfully she was just pulled from the challenge it looked like she didn't look like a cast, but she had something on to mm. kind of comfort it, a brace or something. Yeah. Um, and obviously we're going to get to it, but the Shona injury, which was even worse. But then I found out Killarney got injured as well. I think she posted something saying she was also yes. injured, but stayed in. And one injury is one thing we've seen in the past when someone gets injured, a lot of times they'll cut the challenge. We've yeah. already had one person get pulled from the game. Then you have another injury in Killarney. We're going to keep playing. And then you had Shona go down and literally have to be <laughs> carried off. And I was like watching it. I'm no one to like say anyone screaming too much. Cause I will like, I'll stub my toe and it'll be like, I broke my whole foot. I'm just a baby when it comes <laughs> to that type of stuff. But uh, the way she was screaming, I was like looking away. I was like, Oh my gosh, yes. what did she just do? Like, I thought she was going like something serious. She's saying she can't breathe. I was immediately thinking, okay, she's done. And they mm -hmm. carry her off. And that was, this is the first thing that I can remember that Survivor made the wrong choice. I thought in that moment, challenge over. Uh, whether you push tribal back or whether you go to like drawing rocks or I just thought we've already had two injuries. Two players had to be pulled from this game. We're not getting anywhere. We've done three rounds. No one has moved past like, 10 feet in mm -hmm. either di direction. And I'm like, this challenge is not, not working. I, I, I saw your face there. So it seems like you disagree. So I love to hear what you think um, about it. No, for me, it is. Uh, okay. So it's, it's difficult to say, I get where you're coming from after mm. the numerous injuries, but also, I mean, the, for arguments like on our season, the South yeah. African public was going off about, Oh, these challenges are too easy or blah, blah, oh, blah. And mm -hmm. South Africans' challenges should be like the Australian ones. And and now they do one. And now everyone's complaining about no, the fact okay. that it's too difficult. So yeah. I just, because I love our production team. So I would always yeah. stand up for them when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. I did like, like I said, them changing it up by adding an extra ball 
put some dynamics in it that they needed to be running. Yes. And that's probably that's probably what they should have done from the beginning. Having extra balls that if you don't cover yeah. a ball in time, and, and that's why I don't feel, I get where you're coming from, but yeah. I think on paper, adding the extra ball relieved about a lot of that <clears throat> um, pressure. Of, of I, I, I don't know. No, I want to say thank all, you. I kind of get it. Thank you for saying that. I definitely don't mean <laughs> anything no, harsh to harsh to the, the production team. And, and they did. That was the right move. If you're going to continue, you got to change it. You can't keep doing mm. the same thing. And even when they called it after an hour, I thought that was the right move. Like, we're not going yes. anywhere. Let's just get a new group in and try. Yes. My fear was Steffi, she already been checked out. We knew she was just being pulled from the challenge, but she's still injured in a way. Who knows? what mm. she's going to end up being like in, in a week and down the line or something. Up your whole season. Exactly. Actually, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So say you have to pull both of them out and then someone else gets hurt doing the challenge. Yes. Now you're three people down in the game. Then what are you going to do? Um, no, I get you. But it was scary when Shona went down. I, I don't know yes. what feelings you were having towards it, but <laughs> I immediately thought she was out of the game. Yeah, it was very traumatic and her screaming. And, and I mean, maybe we must talk about the elephant in the room. Um, I don't know how much of, of the feedback online you've seen about um, people going on about our rough uh, and unsportsmanlike. Perfect time to pull it out. Yes, we can talk about this. Yeah. Yeah, you know, pinty, pinty wise. And, and that's something I watched that. Uh, I watched that clip over and over. And I actually watched it with my dad. And he's a big sports fan, too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm probably going to be controversial, but this is my opinion. Is yeah. It really looked like as Shauna was pulling her, she slipped. Pinty was in any case on a mission to win that challenge. Yeah. And anyway, but I think it was a combination of two things instead of just the one thing that it looked like initially. And I do feel that a lot of the other players played just as hard. And as rough, a lot of the men, I mean, look at Shane. He was on top of Pinty and was squeezing. You had people like drowning others in the mud and stuff. It's yes. just the way the edit painted Pinty. Yes, they, they are, can be, I want to say, like doing every time Pinty grabs someone to do it in a slow-mo was a big, maybe over exaggerating that point a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, but I mean, it made for good TV because you wanted to show that. But I, um, what I think people, I never knew this before going on Survivor because I'm not a sports person. I don't know how um, sports people behave and mm -hmm. how competitive these people are. Like, I, when I was in Survivor, I'm like, guys, it's just a challenge. <laughs> or like, if we won already, but be, these people, are, I mean, if you're a sports person, you get very competitive. And I mean, it, it was part of the rules. I said pretty much wrestling in the mud pushing and shoving is going to happen and an accident was bound to happen. And mm. I, I kind of feel for Pine to getting a lot of the flag, but that's a narrative that's been built up in any way, but who she is as a person. I don't know. What's your, what's your opinion on? on well, this? I think it, I think it also adds on to the whole her versus Tanya fact. I was more on Tanya's side, but I'm also not someone that is critiquing Pinty. I thought they both were in the wrong. They both should have just calmed down mm. in a way. But I, I, I did feel like Pinty was causing more of an issue, but not on purpose. Like that's just I'm yes. someone who's I I never have had to like starve myself or anything. <laughs> so if I go out there, I could definitely see myself being someone who eats a little bit too much and stuff like that, just because it's it's a comfort level. And <laughs> adding on now talking about the, the mud challenge, the survivor community can be phenomenal and fantastic at times and we love the fans and how much they support the shows the actual show itself itself but they can also be more of the casual fans could be yeah, so critical ones, yeah. so critical based off the edits um it mm -hmm. is clear that they're trying to paint pinty as kind of a villain this season which is which is okay i didn't think when when that happened with Shona, I didn't think it looked that bad until Shona started screaming. Yes. Um, and yes, they were literally zooming in on Pinty every time she did something. <laughs> I don't know Pinty personally. I haven't spoken with Pinty, but I have spoken with at least six uh, castaways or sorry, like four or five eliminated castaways. Now I've had the chance to speak with you. 
let me just say to the fans listening and watching, I have not heard one person, not even Tanya or Shona, say anything bad about Pine Tea. They both love Pine Tea. Shona says they've talked since and there was no issue. She doesn't have a problem with it. Tanya said that Pine Tea just called her for her birthday and there's no issue there. So like, don't send hate Pine Tea's way. I, accidents happen. That's the mm. thing. Did she drop her meaning to injure her? Absolutely not. And if if anyone is like assuming that, like I have this, you know, a younger brother. I have a younger brother that I love. And I was messing around with him one day and I held this glass plate. I don't know what I was trying to do, but I was trying to do something cool. And I held it over his head where he was sitting and I dropped the plate and I gave him a concussion, cut his head oh, open shit. and everything. <laughs> Did I mean to hurt my brother? No, like it's, it's accidents I, happen. And this is going to happen, especially when people are weak and not getting a lot of yes. food and stuff. Injury is, is more possible. So I definitely agree with you. I was excited to talk about this because I do see a lot of the hate online and it's just yeah. not warranted for pine tea. And also you could see as she was going backwards and she fell, even before I think um, Shana even screamed, Yeah, you could see pine tea even out of fright of what happened because mm -hmm. she probably felt it. But again, I mean, it's it's survivor and, and that's part of it. And people will, because I see a fraction of it, um, it and, and it is what it is. But like you said, Pine is a is an awesome person. We all have our faults. And the thing mm. is they cause people with polarizing personalities. Like they're not gonna put a bunch of people that, that get along personality wise together on an island because it would make boring TV. Yeah. You're gonna put flashing personalities on there that will bring out the worst in each other. Because that's why is it a social experiment then if you're not going to do that? Well, we can jump ahead to to oh, yeah. episode four <laughs> where where Pinty is Killarney's kind of joking about Shona and stuff and how she was saying let off of me and stuff. Pinty actually walks away and she's like, I can't I can't do this at the moment. And she literally tells everyone she doesn't want to hurt anyone like she feels bad about this. So definitely. Stop the hate on Pine Tea, guys. Mm. And and we'll definitely talk to her plenty about it when we interview her. Mm. And I promise you, I think that'll shed a lot of light um, when you actually hear her side of things. Uh, episode four, I know we're, uh, it's a good episode so far, but episode four, there's not much to talk about. We we get, um trying to look here. Uh, so Mesu did win that muddy immunity challenge. Uh, Tony was able to get the ball across. And I mean, everyone was just exhausted. That was... I don't know how anyone had any energy left in that. So Yontau, the new Yontau, even though it's a new tribe, going back at tri going back to tribal, this losing streak continues. Um, I do want to ask before we get into the heat of who ends up going home here, which we've already alert alluded to and everything. What was that meal? I'm sorry to bring up food again, but what was that meal that they Ooh, were having? Bunny chow. <laughs> how do you say that? Bunny chow. Bunny chow. So okay. It was a bit of a zhushed up version of it. So normally you take a quarter loaf of bread. So okay. normal loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. You cut the quarter and you'll turn it on the side and then hollow it out. Okay. And then you put curry in there, like a curry oh, dish. Okay. Uh, a yeah, yeah, curry, yeah. And then you'll put the other stick. This one they've zhushed up a bit to put it in rolls. But the mm. basic principle, you hollow out bread and put um, curry in there. You're gonna, the You're gonna be shocked. You're gonna be shocked when I say, say this. I've never had curry. Oh, never. Okay, you probably don't like burning stuff, like stuff that's hot. That I, I'm why? starting yeah, to come around to, uh, to spicy stuff. Is that like, is all curry super spicy or is, is there like a mild curry? Oh, you know what? We went to watch an uh, episode at Marion's house the other night and her mother made the best curry ever. I think the person that will be able to give you the best recipe was her mother. Oh, really? His okay. Mother. Yeah, it's not spicy, actually. It depends on, on how you make it. It's so many different ways. I'm going to have to I let her. you dream of that. <laughs> when you ha eventually ha uh, have your interview with Marion, get her mother to share that recipe. It's I'll do it. Yeah, I'll say if you can't give it to me here, <laughs> give it to me off air. And, yes. And, yes. Say, and I'll try to make that. Um, we, we go on here. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything mm -hmm. in my notes. Um, Dino Finds yeah. an idol just looking. It looked like it was just one of those. Okay, I'll look around mm -hmm. a little bit. I got some extra time. Finds it in a log, and this is a long-term idol. It doesn't make it very long-term. But, mm. I mean, this is huge for Dino, for uh, someone who's being targeted by Dante here. 
Oh, excuse me. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, so yeah, this is huge for Dino. Um, he passes the information on to Phil and Phil like a million times <laughs> says, are you serious? Are you serious? You have something. Um, da, da, da. Remind me, let me know if I'm missing anything here, but Dino starts playing with the emotions of Marianne yes. and Meryl. And I've seen some people say that's a dirty tactic. I don't think so. I, I didn't see anything wrong with what Dino did. Um, I mean, playing with emotions is such it's like right on the line but he he didn't pull out anything we've seen like people in the past survivors talk about their their dead grandma when they're not really yes, dead like that's crossing the line but it's funny because that's people like johnny faple that's yes. that is that evil character that is that villainous character but i think sometimes maybe and i mean it's hard to talk about dina because we know each other and, mm -hmm. and we've played together but he he doesn't want to be like he doesn't he wants to be both sides. He wanna yeah. he, he doesn't want to play hard and look bad on TV, but he doesn't want to so he's like always in the middle there. And like for me, I have more respect. It sounds weird, but for, for yeah. someone like uh, Dante, that's there, I'm taking it, I'm owning it. This is how because, I'm gonna play. Yeah. And I mean Dino did say it's manipulative and maybe is it wrong? Is it not wrong? But he knows, I mean they say, yeah. I know it's wrong, but I'm doing it. I'm <laughs> loving it. You know? Would he be able That's to play with of... your, would you be buying it? If you were out there playing with Dino again, would you be buying the the show he was putting on? It's hard to say. You're so vulnerable when you're there. Because they <laughs> almost turned all the, all the girls were like, we can't vote for him. And Dante's like, are you, are you mad? Are we seriously <laughs> having this discussion right now? And Dante called it. I really think um, Dino is a very, very good survivor player. He plays a lot of the online games. He's a very good plan. And there I, I think Dante called it. And but again, that's a I don't know. It, each person has got different talents that they can use to get them further in the game. If if that's emotional manipulation. A lot of people said I did the same in our season, so I can't really say. Mm -hmm. Um it's difficult. I, I, I'm I excited to watch your season now. I'm trying to I'm trying to love it. You're gonna love it. I'm trying to get a feel for <laughs> What type of character you are out there? Are you more like a hero <laughs> side or a villain? Have to watch. Oh, I'm I'm excited. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> I'll have to I'll I'll reach out and let you know when I watch it. Yes, probably, like after this yes. season and let you know yes, what I thought. Cool. Um, and by the way, you're super popular with the uh, the fans. I had a lot of people reach out. They were so excited to hear from you. Oh. And I had like three or four former South African players who were like, I'll do the interview, but only if uh, I'm with the, with Santony. So oh, really? very, oh, wow. very popular. So cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> moving on here. Uh, Shona comes back into the game and uh, Nico actually, I think he did the right thing here. He did. He did the right thing. And sorry, uh, roommate just got home. <laughs> oh, hi roommate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Nico, did the right thing here, giving them the night off. Um, and, mm. and I like this. I like this. I was kind of a bit concerned. I'm like, okay, how much is this going to put off the schedule? Mm. Are we still voting someone out? And they did still go to tribal council, but he was like, take the night off, settled it, settle in, um, jumping to as my hair gets in my face, <laughs> <laughs> jumping to the next tribal. Who did you think was more in danger here? Cause we saw the target was, it was either going to be Shona Dino or or Dante and there's a lot of moving pieces here you know what to be honest I feel like all four episodes we are speaking about tonight this was the tribal council I wasn't focusing a lot <laughs> no like same, you same. said you have to go watch it again because online I'm like everyone's saying what did Phil do and Phil this and so watch it again and, and obviously Phil didn't stick to the plan mm -hmm. but I'm kind of um uh, Again, it's hard to speak about people you know, but I, I'm impressed with the, the Dante I'm seeing now compared to the Dante on his season because he didn't want to make moves early on, and and and, he, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but in any mm -hmm. case, I'm loving this Dante. I'm really loving the focusedness and and that you don't want to go, don't go for the easy vote. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Shona is already annoying people with her rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Dina is the puzzle king. You. Like, if you're playing a second time, don't fall in the let's keep the tribe strong and keep a puzzle king there. I kind of would have done the same thing as um, Dante did. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, vice versa. What Dino did to go for Dante, 
um, is like I think they both have the right plan. Um, and yeah. and we'll have to see how it pans out. But again, I I feel for Phil because Phil is a new Skype guy to, to <laughs> on online now. <laughs> Everyone's like making. I think what they call I was... him a flipper oh. with the phi. <laughs> <laughs> with them I, haven't, I haven't posted anything, but I, I said in the interviews earlier, I'm like, why yeah. did I don't, he had the chance to flip and get numbers a little bit. Now I was wrong when I went back and watched it. I thought Pelissa went with them. I was wrong about that. So I need to I go back she? again. She, I, she didn't, she voted uh Dino. Her vote went oh, to really? Dino. Because mm -hmm. everyone was going on about it, that Dino um got her to flip. Oh, mm -hmm. you see, I think we are, but like, yeah, yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> I just watched, I just watched the tribal again. Um, yeah. Now I forgot where all the other votes went, but I watched it, and the first thing was Pelissa holding up a Dino vote. So I need to go back and see who oh. voted, who voted what. But basically, if you guys didn't know, which you should know, but <laughs> Dino plays his idol. He gets rid of like two or three votes that went his way. And then it came down to one vote, and I assume that was Phil's vote, which it was. And it was between Shona or Dante, and Shona ends up going home. And when uh, Nico revealed that vote, I was like, I was so confused. I'm like, who, what? Because I was trying to count <laughs> the votes, and I was so confused. Do you think Phil made a bad decision here? I think Phil's reasoning was... Um, Shona said she thinks it was just a miscommunication between him and Dino. It feels like it, uh, yeah. Or, or I thought, I mean, Phil has also been like, let's just go with the nut. He, he said a few times, I don't want to be on the wrong side of the numbers if I have to integrate with, with the rest of the old Mesu tribe. So well, what it's do you see in this say. situation? Uh, to be honest, uh, it, it, we will only see like on Monday, but yeah, I was also very confused and, and, I don't know. Again, I, I was just, the only relief I felt was that Dante didn't go home. Not that I wanted China to go home, but just in terms of her injury. And it, in my gut, I kind of felt that it would be Shana. Mm -hmm. And then when it was Dante, I, I, I felt too soon for Dante because the big players have fallen. Devin, the, yeah. Seamus, Peter, it was a Chappies. big week. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of, no, I mean, no offense to Shana or anyone. Any, someone has to go off, but I didn't want it to be a player that's playing so hard and giving it their all. Not that Shona isn't, but strategically at least. Um, I'm li I like strategic players and people that are busy making moves early on instead of waiting for moves to happen mm. to them. Well, we said goodbye this week to Tevin, Seamus, and Shona. I mean, kind of surprising. If you looked at last week, Like it wouldn't look like they're on the chopping block. Um, so there it is. We got through four episodes wow. in like, I think an hour and a half ish. Yeah, we're, well we're done. Trying to keep it around an hour. It's just, there's so much to talk about so much. I um, I do want to get your, the last opinions I want is who are you liking moving forward? I mean, we have all kind of picked our winner pick Abraham picked Tony, which I'm like, I don't know oh. how that's going to go. I picked Merrill. Who are you liking moving forward this season? Oh, there's so many. I like I like Shane mm -hmm. just because of his season even. But okay, I like Shane. I, I love Marion. I love the Now full. you can't name the full now, cast. can I do oh, <laughs> oh wait, okay. Okay, must I just do one winner pick? Oh no. You know what I'm gonna pick? Steffi. Ste oh, that's a good one. Because well, she's I a Scorpio like me and she's she's just showing a very softer side to herself this season. And I, I really enjoy it. And she looks like a mermaid with that hair. I She's usually so don't beautiful. like. I usually don't like all like gender alliances. I don't like like all male alliances. I don't all like that. Female. Don't but when they formed uh, the the full package, I was like, this may be my favorite female alliance of all time. And that's even counting like the Black Widows or whatever they yeah. were called. Uh, I I just love it. M Meryl, Marianne, and Steffi. I'm like. These three women can could kill this game. They could go you far in this so? game. Three you think women, so? women don't ever what? agree. Three women together. Okay, okay. And three. So I, I three don't know. powerful women together. Powerful women, yes. So now, uh, okay. Let me say, my money is on. Can I pick two? Uh, from yeah, yeah. that, I think uh, Steffi and Marion, just mm. because um, I don't know why. 
A meryl, I love her to bits, but she's a Gemini. So I'm going to uh, keep my, I don't like Gemini streak. No, I'm so, kidding. <laughs> so now you're telling me, because I'm a bad luck charm, every time I pick someone to do good or something, like I pick this <laughs> fantasy team, I'm competing against like other podcast networks. Three oh. of the four people I picked have already been voted off. So oh, I'm like a super it. bad luck charm. So now you're telling me don't pick any Geminis, right? No, you should. They're good. They're they are good. good. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. I need to get them. on this. I need to get on the star train here. No, you must so. go and do some research on it. It's very interesting. Survivor wise, there's never been a Scorpio female to win Survivor, mm. um, okay. and I don't think a Scorpio male either. No, once Ethan, I think season two, the African oh, one. Oh, he, he's a that? Scorpio. Yes, I think really? he's a Scorpio. Yes, or wow. Virgo. I might be wrong, but yeah, there's only one. But what? Yeah, it's fascinating. I love the knowledge you have that's... on this, like the knowledge of the game and stuff. I I'm love obsessed. It. I ate it four <laughs> times, <laughs> and we have only had like nine seasons. So it started mm. from like twenty years ago. <laughs> oh wow, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, the last question I love to ask. It's it's such a fun question to ask, and I think I know your answer just by spending time with you here today. Would you ever play again if they gave you that call? Yes. <laughs> <Easy>. <laughs> no, I want to be like, I want to be like Rob and Sandra that they have these big statues on a oh, beach. The, <laughs> that's where I want. I <laughs> love it. The giant cheesy statues. No, I but... definitely want to go back. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's, it's obviously one of the hardest things you'll ever do. But if you like a true survivor, hot, hot. I mean, I had a lucky run. It, mm -hmm. it went well for me. So it's easy to say I'll go back. Um, maybe the, the next time around would be way more difficult, which is something that you should gamble on and hope for the best. But just having the chance to play again, um, I'll pay them. I'll pay them to take <laughs> yes. me back. <laughs> That's what Seamus was like. I'll play the game again. No cameras, no money, nothing. I'll just go and play the game. Yes. Like you really miss it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have to say... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you oh, so much yeah. for coming on and spending oh, your, right. your evening with us and, and just the, the support you've given us and shown us since uh, we connected on Twitter there and yeah. everything. So it's been Thanks an so honor. For having me. It's <laughs> love having former players on the show and stuff. And this invitation doesn't close. It's an open invitation. Oh, if you ever awesome. want to come back <laughs> and spend an evening with us, you're more oh, than welcome to. It was so nice. And hopefully one day you guys come and visit us here in South Africa. We would love to. We've been talking about need to take a trip to Australia and South Africa. Yes. Where can uh, fans find you on social? Where's the best place for them to go? So my Instagram is um, at Quieto Cook Sister. Um, you'll find it there. And on Twitter, it's Santini IE, I think. <laughs> no, it's Quieto Cook Sister pretty much everywhere. You'll find me on literally TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, whatever platform there is, I'm on there. <laughs> definitely go give her a follow she's amazing i've enjoyed this uh, this well your evening my well now kind of my evening you're yeah, like early morning <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're early morning so i'll let you go enjoy the rest of your evening and uh definitely gonna have to reach back out to you when the season ends yes to see what you think. and please watch our season first Yes. It's like a pinky promise watch yes. ours first before you do the race pinky promise pinky virtual promise. pinky promise <laughs> thank, thank you, you so thank much thank you so much anthony me. Enjoy evening and so hi to Abram or bye to Abram. <laughs> oh, yeah, bye Abram. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Okay, bye. bye.